This is the Investor Connect podcast program. I'm Hall T. Martin. I'm the host of the show in which we interview angel investors, venture capital, family offices, private equity, and many other investors for early stage and growth companies. I hope you enjoy this episode. Hello, this is Hall Martin with Investor Connect. Today, I'm here with Andrew Belinsky, co-founder and CEO of Lensable. Five years ago, Lensable pioneered the concept of lens replacement. Before that, when someone with prescription glasses needed to replace their lenses, they typically had to visit a store and spend hundreds of dollars to buy new frames with their new lenses. Lensable gave them a new option, keep your frames and they will just replace your lenses. Today, they have helped over 100,000 customers streamline their vision care and save over $5 million. Andrew, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Great to uh, great to be chatting with you, and excited to uh, to get into it. Great, great. Uh, so, what was your background before you co-founded Lensable? So, I've been a serial entrepreneur. Uh, I would say probably my whole life. You know, every uh, dating back to kind of the the you know lemonade stand concept that. Uh, People, people always chat about, but I, I truly did uh, have a lemonade stand when I was a child. Um, but, you know, kind of previous to Lensable, uh, I had a side business that turned into a real business uh, in the, the optical space, um, which I'll tell you about in a second. Uh, but kind of coming out of college, I, uh, I worked in the digital group kind of as an internal consultant that at Live Nation, uh, live on the digital side. Uh, from there, I actually kind of got into the startup world um, really early on in a company called Holtlook, which was a online uh, flash sale e-commerce business um, that a couple of years after I had joined, got acquired by Nordstrom. Um, and from there, I uh, joined a company called Beachmint, which was in the subscription commerce space uh, here in Los Angeles, basically built brands with celebrities and influencers and then kind of sold them in a uh, of the month club, similar to Shoe Dazzle concept. Uh, from there, actually joined uh, the Accelerator Science based out of Santa Monica, California, that was kind of famous for, for seating Dollar Shave Club. Um, but I had uh, built out a mobile advertising business with them called Chirp Ads. Um, and so, you know, a variety of different uh, types of businesses, but uh, kind of along the way, I... Uh, I started a side project with my current co-founder today that was really the you know, idea was kind of to, you know, sell, make and design and manufacture glasses uh, and then sell them direct to consumer online. Um, initially, we were just going to do sunglasses. And so the kind of Warby Parker concept um, came secondary for us. But uh, this was about 2011, 2012. And frankly, that's when Warby was, you know, it just happened to be similar, you know, coincidentally similar timing to, to them gaining lots of notoriety. And, um, and so we, we kind of thought that, that was an interesting concept to go after. Uh, the problem was we didn't know the prescription side of the business. So um, we really, you know, it was kind of two young kids. We, we just researched and taught ourselves and met with optometrist friends and uh, family that had insights into it. And, you know, basically over a course of about six months, uh, really figured out the kind of supply chain as it relates to prescription lenses and how to really bring that offering to our our frame website. Um, and, you know, basically ran that for about four and a half years. Uh, the latter two uh, were, you know, almost a little bit more full time. Um, and really over the course of running that business uh, is when we, you know, we, we had a, a fairly successful business. But, you know, I think as uh, you are entering, you know, the frame space, it's very saturated, right? The contact lens space, very saturated. We kind of just built a, you know, an expertise, if you will, around the prescription lens as a standalone product um, and kind of how that kind of meets the rest of the industry and why customers might, you know, need lenses as a standalone product or how we might be able to make their lives a little bit easier. And kind of throughout that business is really where we conceptualize the, the first, you know, idea for Lensable, which was, as you mentioned before, uh, kind of the first of its kind online lens replacement service. Well, great. So let's talk about the uh, sector itself. How do you see the lensable industry evolving or the, the, the eyewear industry evolving? Where do you think it's going? Yeah. So, you know, I, it's definitely, you know, while all industries are really kind of going through a digital transformation, I would say, you know, many are far more advanced than the vision care industry. You know, I just actually saw a stat earlier today that uh, of materials purchased, um, you know, in vision care, so frames, lenses, contacts, uh, twenty five point four percent done via e commerce in twenty twenty, um, which is a an eighty plus percent increase, I believe, from what the penetration previously had been. Uh, and of course, that makes sense with the pandemic and you know the kind of need for individuals who, who you know, needed new contacts or, or needed new lenses, frames to go online because the traditional you know optical retailers they had gone to uh, no longer 
either existed or were open for short periods of time. Um, but with that said, I think, you know, you've definitely seen with Warby really kind of being the pioneer in the space and growing an incredibly sizable operation that said, you know, there really is no requirement to actually go in store or in doctor's office to purchase frames any longer. You know, it is possible for us to kind of manufacture, design a super high quality frame uh, with prescription lenses at a really, you know, affordable price point um, and sell that to you through, you know, through a website. Uh, so that was, you know, dating back almost a decade at this point. And, you know, the industry has slowly, um, but, you know, kind of picking up more, more near term, really started to kind of take part of that digital transformation of, of customer buying behavior. And so, um, you know, I'd say at this point, buying contact lenses should primarily be an online process. Uh, frankly, the reason for that is because individuals are buying contact brands or products that are specifically stated on their prescription. And, you know, an online or an offline vendor is frankly selling the exact same product. But really, you know, I think where, where we kind of came into play as it related to Lensable was we were seeing actually the kind of frame industry, and this didn't only mean prescription frames, but but sunglasses and, you know, and all different safety glasses, things like that, were really starting to pick up on the Amazons of the world, on a lot of the on large online retailers. And, you know, as we looked at the prescription space and how individuals who were buying on those platforms might need prescription lenses and how they'd get them, the process really always went back to, well, they'd have to go to an optometrist or they'd have to take them to a store. And we really felt like that was at least one of the really broken processes as frames were now being purchased further online. There should have been a way to get prescription lenses online. That was kind of one, one concept. And, you know, secondarily, the idea that really every time or just kind of traditional behavior, every time your prescription changed or your lens is scratched or cracked, it almost required you to kind of go back to a store and then buy a frame and new lenses. And, you know, we all, I think, know how, uh, how inflated some of the prices at physical retail could be. And so, um, you know, I think that's kind of where Lensable saw, you know, an opportunity to bridge this concept of, well, individuals are now more comfortable purchasing frames online. Uh, and so, you know, we should have a solution that, you know, uh, kind of lent itself to to the, the lens side of things, too, whether they wanted to relens, you know, um, an existing frame or they wanted to buy a new frame from an online vendor and then kind of send it send it over to us. What you've seen in the last few years uh, is really the kind of uh, evolution of this digital transformation, not just for purchasing products, but also for services. Um, and I think. You know, the one that everybody kind of thinks about is telehealth, um, which is, you know, has come to the kind of vision care world over the primarily over the last 12 months. But really, when you look at some online destinations, Lensable is, you know, I believe kind of heralding this this concept of really emulating that in-store experience as best as possible. A lot of the emulations exist in the digital world now. And what I mean by that is one kind of pretty simple concept of virtual try on. You know, I would say that one of the best reasons to kind of go into the store to purchase frames is because you actually get to feel them, touch them, try them on and see how they look on you, which of course for, you know, a face, facial accessory is, is very important. Five years ago, virtual try on wasn't a thing. Today, there are a variety of different virtual try on capabilities that a variety of different vendors have. And so, you know, that's just kind of one concept. Um, but, you know, just to talk a little bit more about ourselves, Lensable does offer actually an online vision test. It is a renewal of an expired prescription. We can't yet, it is not yet FDA approved or FDA listed uh, to do a refraction, which would actually, you know, read your eyes. And if you did, you know, be able to uh, dispense you in prescription if your vision had changed from your previous. Um, that does not yet exist, but there is the ability now just in five to 10 minutes through computer and smartphone uh, through lensable.com to actually, you know, get a updated prescription um, if you have an expired one, assuming your vision hasn't changed. And so a huge, you know, new feature and, and opportunity for individuals to, you know, save a lot of the friction and time and cost that was associated with you know, going back in uh, to re-up their prescription, even if their vision had not changed, right? Just to purchase contacts or just to purchase glasses. Um, and then a couple other really cool, you know, things that we do that I think lend it themselves to this digital transformation of vision care. Uh, we have a, a really cool kind of face shape finder on the site. So, uh, for, I'm sorry, frame shape finder. So again, you'd go into a, you know, retail store or a doctor's office and they'd be able to kind of guide you to certain frames that might fit your face better um, because that's, you know, that can be done in person. We can actually now do that online. So we can actually take a screenshot of your face 
uh, and then you know have the diagram of that, be able to measure it through some web, you know, our web application, and then recommend you frames that might fit your, you know, your face shape and size. Um, something super cool, but kind of emulates that kind of salesperson experience that you used to have in store. And then finally, a very new one for us, which I'm super excited about. Um, we actually did just release our first ever app, you know, iOS and Android app, and it's called the Lensable Prescription Reader app. And what it does is it actually enables uh, an individual who has a pair of lenses that work for them, but might not be able to locate their prescription, may not know the measurements off the top of their head, but wants to make a purchase for a new set of glasses or a new set of lenses, rather than having to track down their doctor or the retail store that they got their prescription at however long ago, uh, they can actually download our app free of charge. They can scan the back of their existing lenses and we will to the degree that your prescription falls within the, the range, we'll actually spit out the measurements of your lenses into a prescription form that enables you to use it to make another purchase. So I kind of give you this, this you know, detail on really all the things that we've been able to do to show that it truly is an industry that is transforming digitally. You know, post, post-pandemic, we believe that the e-commerce numbers and uh, vision care materials are going to continue to increase largely. You know, the penetration is, is there. Customers are exploring and getting comfortable with making these purchases online because not only do the products exist in an affordable and kind of simple e-commerce experience, but a lot of the features or functions that you used to go to a doctor's office or a retail store to do have now been, you know, built in really, really cool experiences online. Great. Sound like it's moving online very quickly and that's great to see. What's your advice for people investing in this space? What do you tell them to do before they write a check here? Yeah, you know, I, I, I might be a little bit biased uh, because I live and breathe this space. Um, but, you know, the, the unfortunate fact is that more than two thirds of American adults uh, today have corrective vision. And I think, you know, what we're seeing with young children and kind of how prominent or prevalent, you know, iPads and iPhones are with children kind of staring really close to screens. Um, vision correction is something that is going to be required for many, many people for a very long time. And really, you know, what that kind of lends itself to is a massive total addressable market, you know, just globally, absolutely, but just here in the United States. So I think that it is an industry that has been slow to transform to modern day. Um, there's a lot of kind of different players with different agendas in the industry, right? You have the insurance companies, you have the doctors, you've got the manufacturers of the products and a lot of the new disruptors and kind of all are attempting to kind of pull from a piece of the pie. But with that said, the pie is massive. And so I believe that there should be uh, far more interest in this industry than from an investment perspective than there really has been. Um, and, and I believe that the next decade as the kind of digital transformation picks up, um, you're going to see a lot of new startups, a lot of new concepts, a lot of new brands and products that emerge, uh, and probably a lot of venture money that is coming into this space. Um, you know, I, I think it is important for an investor investing in vision care to not necessarily have had to wear glasses, but definitely helps, right, to have experienced some of the traditional pain points that really are, you know, cemented in consumers' minds. Um, again, around pricing of product, around experience going to the, you know, the doctor's office, um, and a lot of what should be able and now can be done digitally uh, that had not been able to be done before. And so I, I'd say, you know, it's not a requirement, but, but absolutely, you know, a number of the investors on our cap table got excited about us because they truly had experiences with the problem that we were solving for, one of the problems that we were solving for. Uh, and it's allowed them to be far more helpful to us along the way, both from a strategy and advice and feedback perspective, but also, you know, for, for, from connecting us and introducing us to relevant individuals and, in, you know, in the space that, that could be helpful. So how do you sell this new market to investors, especially if they don't have uh, familiarity with the new trends or the use of it? Yeah, you know, I think the fortunate part for us is that there's a lot of, well, at least two to two out of three, uh, you know, adults in the U.S. have had some experience with this. And so it's not terribly difficult for us to find um, investors that, that, you know, may have had experiences that, that we're, you know, building, building fixes for. You know, I would say uh, it's also an industry, though, and I think this is kind of where investors need to be sold. It's an industry that is largely dominated by some very, very significant businesses, um, by a few. Uh, you have Essilor Luxottica, you have BSP, you have National Vision. 
um, and you know, number of additional competitors, some of which are you know large public companies, some of which are just very large private companies. And so, you know, I, I, I've definitely run into some hesitation, uh, some apprehension from investors about you know entering from an investment perspective, entering the space that there are massive conglomerates that you know, should be able to compete with any new company very easily without going too far down why we believe that that's not, you know, a, a major risk factor. I think that, you know, we've had to kind of continue to innovate on our idea. Um, so just for, for kind of some more context, we launched Lensable in 2017 as the first of its kind online lens replacement service, right? Our, our business was selling lenses. Um, we built a beautiful e-commerce experience, a beautiful set of packaging, but Primarily, the idea is that if you have a frame that needs new lenses, you can select, and Lensable has probably the widest variety of custom lens options, both online or offline, uh, really any vendor here in the US. Um, and that's because we have a really, really great operational partner, one of the largest lens manufacturers and optical lab owners in the world. But frankly, you know, that was our core business. And that was brand new. We had kind of created that concept. Today, fast forward four years, you've seen some big players 1-800-CONTACTS built uh, you know, a competitive solution to us, um, and a handful of other smaller players have, have now joined the ranks. Uh, but you know, kind of selling a new concept uh, is hard no matter what industry you're in, right? And so it took us a fair amount of time to really be able to, to kind of get product market fit there and to get investors comfortable. I think fortunately for us along the way in doing that, our idea, our vision, and there are many puns in my world, as I'm sure you can imagine, um, but our vision had really expanded. And it expanded because we spent a lot of time in you know, optical retail stores doing research, just like any you know, kind of new up and coming companies would that, that are looking to compete with some incumbents. And you know, we just noticed a lot of issues and a lot of friction around the co consumer purchasing experience in these physical stores. Um, and of course, you know, we were an online uh, digitally native business. And so kind of thinking about bringing the identical experience online was, you know, a kind of a simple concept for us to go after. But um, I think really spending the time in those stores allowed us to see that there really is an opportunity to build, you know, an end to end online optical retail experience that not only rivaled the, you know, stores and chains that you've heard about for many years and you see on every corner in your city and, you know, have TV commercials, um, but really build a better experience. Of course, you know, in our mind, it's a better experience when we can reduce friction. And that meant time and accessibility and ease of actually getting the products, right? Online versus offline. Pricing around a lot of the stuff, you know, physical retail stores have a lot of costs that online businesses may not have. And the audience or you know, the consumer base they can attract is a more, uh, you know, regionally specific one where we have access to the entire country. And so we were able to do a lot of the same things and bring costs down, um, but really also kind of, you know, present product and service to individuals in an easier way. And I think, you know, we make a custom product for every single prescription lens order. And, you know, there are hundreds of permutations of lens options that I think consumers traditionally didn't really think through or have to think through because they purchased from the doctor. Uh, and so I think we've, you know, definitely done a fair amount of education through the experience we've created that has really opened an individual's eyes up to, you know, maybe I was overpaying or maybe I was getting, you know, coatings I didn't need, or, you know, now maybe Lensable is offering me everything that I used to not know if I needed or was too expensive for me, but they're offering it all as kind of a standard, you know, set of coatings or, or standard practice. So, um, you know, I think over time, we've built out this much more extensive offering, right? We sell contacts, we sell frames, we sell lenses for your frames. We've got this suite of digital kind of measurement apps and technologies that really emulate that in-store experience. And, you know, I think that had helped us continue to impress investors. Um, obviously, the sales have to come with it, but, you know, we've been fairly efficient in being able to generate new customers at a, at a you know, reasonable price and be able to generate you know, a fair amount of revenue off of them. And you know, where we've gotten to today, uh, and really about a year ago was when we kind of you know, realized we, had, we were onto something pretty big and our idea from being this kind of end-to-end one-stop shop for all things optical online really had an, an additional opportunity, right? It had, there, there was a, a larger aspect or a larger 
kind of uh, goal that we were able to go after. And that was really entering the vision benefit space. And that is kind of, you know, where we're focused heavily today. And we've just released a new product called Lensable Plus. Um, and it really is, you know, our answer to or our competitive solution alternative, what have you, to traditional vision insurance plans. Um, and so I say all this in that, and I'll, I'll give you some more details on it in a second, but I say all this in that we've kind of understood what the investor world was looking for, the things that would excite them. And it did require us to continue to innovate, continue to expand our offering. And, you know, fast forward four and a half years to where we are today, uh, there's a trend in, you know, the venture world of kind of benefit tech or insure tech. Um, and we now can play in that space. Uh, we are an e-commerce company at heart, but we're also a technology company. We've built software from from scratch that has usability, not just necessarily for our e-commerce store, but also potentially for others in the space. And so, you know, I think it's, you got to continue to innovate. You have to continue to, you know, strive for, you know, if the every week or every month be changing your business model or pivoting. But I think you have to, you know, look at a really, really big picture these days because in other categories and other types of, you know, businesses there, you're seeing, you know, huge, huge numbers, both in the public and private markets. And that's what's exciting investors, opportunities of that size. Um, and so, you know, for us, it just took a little longer to kind of understand what that opportunity could be for us. Um, but, you know, investors have kind of watched us along the way. And now we're starting to have some of the interest, for, you know, interest from individuals we maybe didn't have two years ago when we were, you know, just a, a little bit more narrow of an offering. Great. And so what is the growth rate of this sector? How fast is it growing? Uh, well, so, you know, the as I mentioned earlier, e-commerce penetration uh, for vision care materials was about 25% last year, which was up from, uh, you know, just low, low double digit percentage the, the prior year. So it's growing incredibly quickly. You know, I, I think optometrists and, and phys optical retail stores, at least during the pandemic, a lot of those had to either, you know, shut down for a short period of time or even shut down for good. Again, if it was a retail store, probably had a little bit more trouble staying open. But, you know, a lot of touching of products in those stores and things that were really just, you know, very uh, kind of COVID unfriendly, if you will. And so, you know, we believe that the amount of time that people were unable to kind of go back to the places that they were normally, you know, used to going to purchase these products, either we did a really good job of kind of, you know, showing up where they searched um, or kind of finding them online, or, you know, they found us because in, in their own searches, because really they, they needed that next box of contacts or they needed to swap out their lenses because they couldn't see. It gave enough time for, for people, we think, to really get comfortable with, you know, buying these products online. Um, and it's not that every person is going to be comfortable, you know, buying new glasses online or contacts. And, you know, fortunately, it's a big enough pie that we think, you know, a small percentage is, uh, is what's needed to, to make a really big business. But we believe that, you know, the e-commerce penetration will continue to grow uh, at double digit percentages year over year um, in vision care for both buying materials and also performing certain services like vision tests and different measurements that, you know, traditionally uh, required you to go in store in person. It seems like this industry has traditionally been dominated by a few key players. How many companies are engaged in it now that it's going digital? Yeah, you know, it's it's funny. You are starting to see uh, a handful of, you know, new new entrants into the space in the kind of product selling side. And I would say that's just because of, you know, truly how simple it is these days to, you know, launch an online e-commerce store, right, on Shopify or, or WooCommerce or any of the, the kind of t more templatized commerce platforms. Look, the, the big conglomerates, uh, many of them have acquired, you know, digital properties over the years. Uh, and that's kind of how they've become big conglomerates, not necessarily by building everything in house, but by acquiring, you know, many small and large businesses. Um, and to their credit, you know, that is why they've been so difficult to compete with. But again, when, when you are such a large company, it just becomes a little bit more difficult to uh, be as agile, move as quickly. You know, decisions have to go through the ranks of corporate America in many instances. And that does make it harder to, you know, change business model, right? When so much of your kind of historical business has been around physical retail presences. And that's kind of the one biggest issue. And so while, while I think a lot of the big companies are very much so, you know, uh, trying to transform digitally, they have specific groups uh, called digital transformation groups. Um, you know, a, a young startup that can be agile that, you know, is 
thinking about new potentially wacky ideas, but ones that they can test and get to market really quickly like us, um, you know, really has an opportunity. I don't want to say an upper hand because these are still massive, massive organizations you're competing with, um, but really has an opportunity to, you know, gain some market share in whatever their specific category is. Uh, and, you know, I think we've started to do that. Uh, Warby Parker clearly has gained a, a sizable amount of market share, you know, and there are a handful of other companies that are doing unique things that are still privately held, you know, so I, I think we're going to continue to see it. Um, but I do think that, you know, in the coming years, a lot of the big organizations are going to put a bigger focus on digital and, you know, either by building or buying um, companies that exist. And, and that's just kind of what we've seen in, in this industry historically. So what are the challenges in creating a new market segment like the digital one? What are you, what are you up against when you do that? Yeah. So for us, you know, the, the thing that we were, we were up twofold against, uh, against some very, you know, difficult things when we launched lens replacement for one, it was a brand new concept. So, you know, the education to the consumer, um, and really getting consumers to do anything new that they've truly never done before, which is buy lenses for their own frame online is just difficult. Right. And so that was definitely, and still continues to be an uphill battle that we, you know, climb and it requires lots and lots of education. But I would say for our business specifically, prescription lenses are a custom product for every single product that's made, right? Which is very, very different than frames, which is very different than, you know, shoes or furniture, right? And things that traditionally are manufactured, let's just say overseas, but you get samples, you approve the samples, the manufactured runs are created and then sent to your warehouse. And, you know, it's very simple. You kind of put them on the website, you sell them, and people know what to expect, right? What they're getting and everything has already been made. For us making prescription lenses, you know, it's a it's a unique custom medical product with a variety of different, you know, measurements that oftentimes are hard to read on on the prescription paper that's sent in. And so, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a challenge because people's vision, every single individual in the whole world has different vision. And right. And, you know, you're not going to have exactly the same axes measurement or, you know, cylinder measurement. And the frame that you send into us is a unique shape compared to the other frame that somebody else sends in. And so, again, there's a lot of customization for each individual product um, that just makes our business a little bit more difficult to operate than most others. Um, and I would then also say even oftentimes, you know, a customer will get their lenses back and not oftentimes, but from time to time, they'll get their lenses back. All the measurements look like they were done correctly through our supply chain. And, you know, it just doesn't work for the customer. And that is going to happen. Um, and so sometimes I guess where I'm going with that is even when you do everything right, it may not 100% of the time be right. And this is not any different than what the optometry, you know, industry experiences or the retail store experiences. So, you know, I would say the uh, kind of a new segment, a new buying behavior is just difficult and takes time and money and cost, you know, to really educate the consumers on. And then a custom product has its own set of challenges, um, both of which is what we started out with rather than <laughs> kind of layered that in down the road. But I think we were stronger I mean, and built a stronger foundation for it. Um, and fortunately, you know, I kind of think of ourselves as I'll bite a very, you know, small but growing market our category, we are the kind of category leader in lens replacement. So when you talk to investors, how do you describe your position in this new landscape? Are you on the premium side or the low cost side? Or how do you uh, communicate where you're going to land in it since it is a new segment and it's still forming? Yeah. So, you know, I think, uh, and kind of, as I've mentioned, we've We've definitely expanded our offering and the kind of branding and community and marketing message of what we do from just being the lens replacement business to being the online optical store to now being the modernized vision benefits platform. And all of the things we've sold along the way still exist. Um, all of the kind of functionality that one can encounter when they come to our site all still exists. But, you know, really going forward, the way that we are branding ourselves and communicating, you know, our message to, to investors is that we are modernizing vision benefits and vision care. Um, and we're doing that through, you know, administering our own plans that are custom to individual consumers, specifically to the contact that they are looking for, specifically to the type of lenses that they're looking for. Um, and really this concept of modernizing a benefit category or an insurance category 
we've seen success in other, right, in dental and in health and a handful of other categories, um, that that has seemingly picked up and worked really well. And truly, that is what we're doing. So, you know, I would say for the last couple of years, we've kind of pitched ourselves as the one-stop shop for all things optical online and very similar to, you know, a uh, nationwide optical retail chain, but a digital version. Uh, we've now kind of taken, you know, this next approach and expanding the, that ability into uh, what many think of as of as vision insurance, um, although it is truly benefits and a benefit plan more than it is an insurance plan, uh, but really modernizing that. Uh, and that means, right, the experience is digital. That means we're moving a lot of the friction and complexities associated with transparency into what's covered. Um, and at the end of the day, that really means, you know, lowering out of pocket requ cost requirements for, for individuals and still offering them a good to very premium experience and, and premium quality products. Great. Well, in the last few minutes that we have here, what else should we cover that we haven't? I think we've we've gotten pretty pretty thorough. Um, I you know I, I do want to let everyone know about uh, you know our really exciting new new vision benefits platform and offering. It is called Lensable Plus. Um, you know next time you are thinking about vision coverage for the year, a vision plan, uh, we will you know become an option in due time uh, for employers to make available to their employees. But for anybody who does not currently participate in an employer or group sponsored plan. Um, and may either have an individual vision plan or, you know, kind of just pieces together their vision care, uh, buying from different vendors online and offline. You know, I really think we've, we've built a online solution that is going to save you, you know, primarily save you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars per year out of pocket uh, for some of those more extreme cases. Um, is going to really remove a lot of the friction associated with having to go to multiple vendors or locations for different products and is going to kind of be a really simple and effective solution for you to make sure that you're kind of covered for all the vision care requirements that one might have that wears contacts and glasses on an annual basis um, without really having to be concerned of where do I go, how much is it going to cost, what am I going to get reimbursed, all that stuff that has traditionally made vision insurance plans really difficult for people to uh, to ingest. So um, we'd love for, for people to come and, and kind of explore that on the website. Um, and, you know, we are uh, excited to, to put this offering out into the world. Great. Well, how best for listeners to get back in touch with you? Yeah, uh, I'm, you know, personally uh, available on, on Twitter and Instagram. It's, you know, first and last name at Andy Belinsky. I'm always happy to chat, but lensable.com, L-E-N-S-A-B-L.com is where you can really find out all the information about us and begin the buying process for really anything that we sell, um, explore Lensable Plus. And, you know, we are at Lensable on uh, all the major social networks, Instagram, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, and uh, we are, you know, happy to chat with anyone, answer any questions at any time. Great. Well, we'll put those in the show notes. I want to thank you for joining us today and hope to have you back for a follow-up soon. I thank you so much for the time and the chat. It was great. Investor Connect helps investors interested in startup funding. In this podcast series, experienced investors share their experience and advice. You can learn more at InvestorConnect.org. Paul T. Martin is the director of Investor Connect, which is a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to the education of investors for early stage funding. All opinions expressed by Hall and podcast guests are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinion of Investor Connect. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon as a basis for investment decisions.